hello. I'm delighted to welcome you to our veterinary nursing virtual open event here at Caffra Greenmount campus. We have two courses on offer, a level two certificate in veterinary care support and a level three diploma in veterinary nursing. We work in partnership with veterinary practices across Northern Ireland who are vital in helping students gain the knowledge and the skills needed to become a veterinary nurse. Greenmount is situated halfway between the historic town of Antrim and the International Airport and is only 20 miles from Belfast. It's easy to get to and there's a regular bus service from Antrim. Greenmount has excellent educational facilities as well as highly qualified, experienced staff. Our veterinary nursing teaching team consists of both veterinary nurses and veterinary surgeons who are always very supportive and really generous with their time. Many of our graduates have gone on to successful careers in veterinary practices and ancillary businesses in Northern Ireland and further afield. There are over a thousand students at Greenmount studying agriculture, horticulture and land-based engineering as well as veterinary nursing. The campus is buzzing but there's a real sense of community here which people will remember long after they graduate. It's a beautiful place to study with a lot of investment in teaching and learning resources and it doesn't stop there. Over the next number of years there will be even more investment in new student accommodation, science and teaching facilities. Greenmount really is the place to be and has lots to offer so welcome and I hope you enjoy our virtual event. Hello and welcome to our open evening at Caffrey uh, Greenmount campus. Uh, Caffrey operates three campuses, uh, one at Enniskillen which has a focus on, on equine with a small provision in agriculture, one at Lockery where the focus is on food education and postgraduate programmes and here at Greenmount campus where the focus is on agriculture, horticulture, floristry, land-based engineering and veterinary nursing. The focus of our open evening uh, is of course on, on uh, veterinary nursing and I'm joined by Bethan Pinhay who is the programme manager for veterinary nursing and also uh, Claire Morris who, who lectured on the programme as well. Uh, very much uh, the focus uh, of this evening is to provide an overview of the programmes, um, how you apply to them, the length, the duration and uh, some other uh, information around facilities here at Greenmount campus. So to, to kick off, uh, I'm going to turn to, to Beth and to start with, uh, to give an overview and a background, first of all, to the Level 2 programme, Beth. Yep, so um, we offer a couple of courses uh, here at Greenmount. So as you said, the Level 2. Um, the Level 2 is for students who want to sort of get started in the industry. So it's the Veterinary Care Support um, Level 2 Certificate. Um, and the benefit is that you can train alongside qualified professionals in practice. So it's to give you an overview of sort of how fast paced the veterinary environment uh, can be. Um, it's a really nice stepping stone for students as well to a get that background but also if they want to progress onwards um, in their veterinary career um, so the level two it operates one day a week so students are primarily online at the moment um, but there will be some days on campus as well so as well as their learning with us, we also have our students out in practice. So they are in practice and expected to do roughly about 18 hours a week in practice. So they're getting the benefit of uh, theory and the taught side of things whilst being able to put all that learning into practice. Okay. And a student that's coming onto that programme, would you expect them to have some work experience uh, before they would apply? Um, it's useful for them to have done, um, but it's not a prerequisite for the course. It's just sort of so students can get a bit of an idea and a flavour of what the veterinary industry is all about. So it's absolutely not a necessity, but it, it's useful. Okay. And are there any costs associated with that course? No. So we cover all of the teaching costs for that course. So in terms of fees for the course, that's covered by us. Okay. So that's the level two programme. Level two, yeah. Okay. So the level three programme then? The Level 3 programme is our professional qualification. So the Level 3 uh, Diploma in Veterinary Nursing is run in conjunction with the award and body, which is VetSkills. Um, so VetSkills are a national provider across the UK of um, veterinary nursing education. In tandem with that, we also work closely with the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. So the RCVS are the governing body um, and the regulatory body of the veterinary profession in the UK. So vet surgeons and vet nursing. 
So the level three course, you will come to college one day a week um, and the rest of the time you're employed in a veterinary training practice. Now that has to be a specific training practice and that is different from the level two where students can be in any practice across Northern Ireland. Um, a training practice has specific requirements and we have a list of those on our website. Um, all a training practice is, is one that has been sort of approved and deemed um, busy enough, it has the caseload enough and it's the standard that it can train these nurses in. So you come to college one day a week and you are in practice the rest of the time in that training practice. At the end of your qualification, you will come out with not only your sort of your level three learning but you will also have your professional qualification so you'll be able to register on the register of veterinary nurses and practice as a qualified VN. Okay and how long does the level three programme last for? Around about two and a half years and um, so the theory itself is taught over two and a half years it's a funny sort of time and amount um, for a course to have but it's because there's so much to put into that that learning and um, in terms of when you'll be qualified we're roughly looking at around 27 months so the theory and the teaching will finish and that gives you the opportunity to practice for your practical exams which come at the end of the course the OSCEs. Okay, thanks uh, Bethan for that introduction to the two programmes. Um, again, facilities here at Greenmount Campus uh, are a very important part uh, of the teaching uh, infrastructure here uh, at the college. And at this stage I'm going to hand over to Rosemary Colgan who in instructs on the programme uh, and she's going to give an overview of the facilities here at Greenmount Campus. <music> We offer a Level 2 Certificate in Veterinary Care Support course aimed at students who wish to train as an Auxiliary Veterinary Care Assistant and a Level 3 Diploma in Veterinary Nursing. Both courses focus on the care and support of companion animals or common family pets. On campus, students have full access to the Veterinary Nursing Centre, which mirrors aspects of their working environment in a veterinary practice. The Veterinary Nursing Centre contains x-ray equipment, anaesthetic equipment, an ultrasound machine and a surgical suite. Staff make use of a range of skeletons and anatomical mannequins to illustrate the anatomy of the companion animals which students will be learning about. The students also have access to the Greenmount Laboratories which have a range of microscopes, centrifuges and refractometers to carry out common veterinary tests. Students who are enrolled on the Level 2 or Level 3 course spend a considerable amount of time in their chosen veterinary practice. They will be working with a clinical team of nurses and vets in practice while spending one day a week on campus. The level of the course will determine what duties and clinical skills that can be taught to the student. Level 2 students will develop important auxiliary nursing skills to support the registered veterinary nurse and vet in practice. By working and learning on campus and in practice simultaneously, students get to put their skills into use every day in the veterinary practice. Level 3 student nurses work towards joining the professional register for veterinary nurses held by the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. To join the register, CAFRI Level 3 student nurses must demonstrate they have mastered the day one skills expected of any nurse who trains in the UK. These day one skills relate to the safe and effective care of small animals and ensure the highest standards of care are maintained within the profession. Such skills include safe working practices, maintaining an animal's accommodation, providing feed and water and carrying out basic nursing care. Level 2 students will also learn the anatomy of the companion animals they will be looking after in practice. Students will be shown the correct and safe methods of preparing and supporting the patient for investigative procedures such as endoscope, ultrasound and x-ray examinations. Students will learn important life-saving techniques and how they can support the veterinary team during life-saving procedures. All Level 3 student nurses focus on the essential day one core skills necessary to carry out safe and effective general practice nursing, support common procedures and treatments in cats, dogs, rabbits and guinea pigs. However, once qualified, nurses can specialise in various aspects of veterinary nursing, for example, orthopaedic or emergency nursing. I hope I have been able to show you CAFRI provides unique facilities bespoke for training those who wish to work within small animal veterinary care and nursing. The underpinning knowledge and practical skills taught on campus reinforce the time spent in a veterinary practice, ensuring students are fully trained, competent, safe practitioners in the profession.
So thanks to Rosie for that overview of the facilities here at, at Greenmount campus. I should just say at this point, if you've any specific questions that you'd like to ask, please post them uh, and we'll get back to you uh, as soon as we can. Uh, I'm now going to turn to Claire Morris. Claire is one of the lecturing staff uh, on the veterinary nursing programme. Uh, to give some background to her uh, career uh, and uh, experience to date, Claire. So turning to you, Claire, you, you completed uh, a veterinary nursing degree, I'm right in saying. I did indeed. So um, from a young age, I knew I wanted to work within the veterinary industry. So um, being a farmer's daughter, I was always surrounded by, um, I suppose, mostly farm animals um, from such a young age. So I always had a clear path that that's what I wanted to do was to be involved in veterinary of some sort. So after my GCSEs, I um, went on progressed to do my A-levels and then went to do the degree programme um, over in London. So that was a four year course and fantastic opportunity. Uh, when I qualified then, I um, worked in London, um, in Hertfordshire, um, the Royal Veterinary College's referral hospital for about a year and a half. So. Starting out um, as a young um, veterinary nurse, that was a fantastic opportunity um, just to see so much of an expanse. Um, something I suppose that's quite important um, in the veterinary world is to see, I suppose, a good range. So to see what you can do from such a small budget and then obviously the other end of the scale of referral world as well. So when I moved um, home um, after that real sort of insight, um, it was important for me to find somewhere in Northern Ireland that was, um, I suppose, as good an opportunity but just in a different way. So first of all, what I did was um, I worked um, for Vets Now, which was um, about a year um, doing night shifts. So again, that was the total other end really to see um, really what was involved in emergency care um, throughout, um, I suppose, veterinary nursing in, I suppose, the city in Northern Ireland as such. And then I moved to Clare Veterinary Group um, and have been there for over 10 years. Um, fantastic opportunity, um, a hospital that um, I suppose generally for veterinary nurses, it's all small animal based. So um, that gave me a great opportunity. And then I suppose how I really managed to get into the teaching side of things was, I suppose, as your career progresses throughout veterinary nursing, you then realise that you are seeing lots of new veterinary nurses coming into the industry. And what you want to do is basically to encourage them and support them and to, I suppose, safeguard the veterinary nursing profession for the future. And that's really what I wanted to do. So the opportunity came up to um, do a little bit of locum teaching which I quite enjoyed. So um, when the full-time position came up, I um, thought I would give it a go, see how it would go. And um, it's been a challenge um, in many ways. Um, obviously, it's brilliant to see nurses coming in to the college um, and seeing them progress then in practice. So it's been quite, um, I suppose, a positive experience and I suppose a nice clear pathway for myself. What advice would you give to a young person thinking about a career in veterinary nursing? The most important thing would be it's not all about um, coming in and you know struggling all the little puppies and kittens. That you obviously do get but veterinary nursing is very specialised. There, It's a lot of hard work. It's really quite intense and the hours are long. It's not something that you want to go into just because you think that this is something that I can do. It's an easy route. You know it's a pleasurable job it is, but it is extremely intense. It's tough work and it's extremely rewarding. As long as you put in the effort into your job, you'll get a lot out of it. Okay. Are there any particular skills uh, are required to become a veterinary nurse? We always say um, it's not all about the animals. The animals do have a client and you have to have good social skills. So you need to communicate. Animals can't talk to us. They can't tell us what's wrong. So we need to be able to speak to that client and pick up on those little, tiny little hints that they may be giving us in order for us to think about what the condition that they may have. Obviously, you know, through diagnostics and um, medical and surgical techniques as such, we will get to the bottom of the problem, but it is all about communicating with the client that's spending the most time with that animal. So I suppose making sure that we can communicate well and also good teamwork, has to be teamwork. Um, in a veterinary practice, you, you're 
practice team members are your family. You know, you see them every day and you have to be, I suppose, have that level of respect and also knowledge as well so that you can communicate well and pick up on, obviously, I suppose, it's technical, you know, there's a lot of surgical procedures. We need to make sure that we can communicate and have that confidence to say if there's something wrong, if we pick up on a problem in practice. Okay. Um, Beth can give a nice overview of the Level 2 and the Level 3 programmes earlier. If we concentrate, first of all, on the Level 2, what would a typical day be for a Level 2 student? Well, a Level 2 student, um, Primarily they have a nice little mix of practical and theory. Um, so we provide the theory at college. Um, that would be really going through workbooks and going through, I suppose with small animal, we focus on cats, dogs and exotics. Okay, so really it is, I suppose, a little bit of a basic insight into what the veterinary nursing course will entail. So a little bit about anatomy, a little bit about handling, um, restraint, I suppose everything is sort of an introduction to that. Okay, and then the level three programme as well then, um, the difference between that and level two, what, what would the main differences be? The level three programme just steps up a notch basically, so that's where things become a little bit more intense. There's a lot more required of our level three students. So we have um, assignments, um, we have exams, multiple choice exams, um, written exams. It's a lot more intense. It's a very um, specific course. So um, it's all obviously veterinary nursing based, but we need to have those students with a wide variety of knowledge as well. So it's, um, it's um, intense. Okay, and there's sort of, I mean, the split between practical skills and, and the, the teaching side, would it be 50-50? It probably would be, to be fair. The students are in practice four days a week, okay? And obviously working weekends and things like that. Um, a lot they would learn practical in the um, practice. However, college, we provide them with the knowledge that they then can put into practice. So um, I would say it probably is, looking at it, you probably think it's more practical, but there's a lot of theory that goes into that so that they can obviously practice their skills in practical setting. Okay, uh, thanks for that there Claire, it gives a, a good overview of, of the programme itself. Um, training practices was mentioned, and I'm going to turn to Bethan again, and we, uh, just in relation to training practice, and, and what does that mean by a training practice? So a training practice is one that has been approved by us. So us as the Veterinary Nursing Accredited Centre, we would send out a qualified member of staff to have a look around that veterinary practice, just to ensure that it is at the level that we need to train these veterinary nurses. Um, the standard of veterinary nursing across the UK is very, very high, and part of that is because we have and we work in conjunction with these training practices so we need to know that they're of an equivalency across the UK so there's that sort of um, quality assurance across all of them. Um, we work very closely with our practices and the staff in them um, and we have a really good working relationship with them and at the moment we have roughly about a bank of around 50 training practices across Northern Ireland um, with more interested in becoming training practices. Um, so it, it just sort of differentiates a quiet practice from one that has the ability, the staffing and the, the clinical skill level and caseload to support a student nurse. Okay, uh, and training practices then, obviously, uh, and um, I'm aware of the clinical coaches within the training practices. What's meant by a clinical coach then within a practice? So a clinical coach is a member of staff within that practice and it'll be a qualified member of staff and that might be a veterinary nurse or even a veterinary surgeon, but it's somebody who is a professional within the practice who supports the learning of the student. As Claire mentioned, there's a lot of theory that goes along with veterinary nursing and equally there's a lot of practical. Some of the practicals we can't um, do in uh, the college environment, you know, we, we aren't able to anaesthetise a dog every day for students. Um, so students will have to get that hands on experience in practice. The clinical coach will be somebody that guides them through that learning. So those sort of higher level, those specialist yeah. skills, it's somebody just to be sort of nominated and there for them. OK, so they're there to support the students then when they're out on practice. OK. In terms of then finding a training practice, is that up to the student then to do that? It is, yeah. So, <coughs> sorry. 
we have no um, no dealing with the practice um, and the recruitment. Um, we can certainly guide students and um, let them know. And on our website, there is a link to the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons list of trading practices um, in Northern Ireland. So my best advice for students would be to be professional when approaching practices. Veterinary industry and animal placements um, are very competitive and always have been and probably more now so after the pandemic um, so make sure you have a really good covering letter and a good CV send that out to the practice um, initially perhaps follow that up with an email um, even try ringing them practices are very very busy so don't be disheartened if you don't hear back immediately um, training placements come up but they can be few and far between um, and sometimes practices may employ students for a year before putting them forward for training so a lot of it is about getting a foot in the door so speak to practices communicate with them if they offer you some sort of experience take it um, because whatever you get from them will be really valuable. Okay then uh, thanks again Beth and, uh, and Claire as well for those overviews of both the level two and the level three programs some questions that just have been posted, and I just again, I'll, I'll put these to, uh, to the two members of staff here. In relation to costs associated, Beth, and with the Level 2 and the Level 3 programme, could you just recap on that again, please? Of course, yeah. So there are no fees associated with the Level 2 course. Um, the college covers the, um, the tuition fees there. For the Level 3, again, the tuition fees are covered. Um, the enrolment fees to enrol with the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons will be payable by the student or the practice. Um, likewise, the costs of the practical exams over in England um, and the travel to those as well. Okay, thanks for that, Beth. And another one for Claire, I think, in relation to the animal species studied. Uh, is there any specific animal species that are studied on either the Level 2, Level 3 programmes, or is it just a range? Level 2 and Level 3 is cat, dog and exotic, and the exotics would include rabbit and guinea pig. So that would be the four that would be primarily focused on as such. Okay, uh, and the other question, Claire, then, just as around career opportunities when students finish the Level 2 or the Level 3? So the Level 2 course is really a stepping stone and most students that have enjoyed the course will progress on to the Level 3. Okay, they don't necessarily have to, there is plenty of jobs in which they'll be able to work with animals, it will just not be on, I suppose, as much of a detailed basis. The Level 2 um, that is a one-year course, okay, and then the Level 3 course is a two-year course. It's the same, most progress on to the Level 3. Um, at the end of the Level 3 training, um, students mostly go into working as a veterinary nurse in practice, okay. Um, and as I said, even for my own um, self, trying to get a variety of practices to work in is always a benefit. So whether that be emergency care, um, even though we qualify as a small animal veterinary nurse, there is nothing wrong with one of our students going to get a job in a mixed practice, okay? They will all have the essential skills in terms of monitoring anaesthesia, taking blood samples, and um, preparing an animal for radiography. All of those things will be useful in um, a large or a small practice. Okay then. Uh, in terms of, again, the progression from level two to level three, is that straightforward then, or, or what, what does a student have to do? It is. It's straightforward in the sense that if a level two student is already employed in a training practice, okay, generally their practice will um, send them ahead, get them enrolled, and they'll just transition nicely into that. If a level two student has a practice um, that is not a training practice, that can be where it's a little bit more tricky. So the level two student will have to either leave that practice to go to a training practice um, in order to um, go into the level three course or their practice can arrange to become a training practice. So it can be a little bit tricky, um, but as Bethan said, getting any experience in any veterinary practice, whether they are training practice or not, will set that student up to be a more eligible candidate um, to go on to the Level 3 course. Okay, and finally one other question just around students and living on campus. Um, is that the case for veterinary nursing students? Um, our students, because they are um, mostly employed by the practice um, four days a week and they only come to our um, college one day a week, the students aren't generally here on site. So um, they do not stay um, at the college. Um, there is an opportunity there if they want to. There is houses available, but generally because they're only at the practice one day a week, they don't stay. 
our students come from as far as Enniskillen, so for them it wouldn't be ideal for them to stay down this direction. Okay, Clara, and again, thanks again for that there. A really good overview there of both the Level 2 and the Level 3 programmes and the opportunities that exist for students who have finished those there. I should just say, because the students um, don't stay on site, they still have the opportunity to avail of student support and everything that goes with that when they are on campus here. And even outside uh, the teaching hours, they will have that opportunity. We're now going to take a look at the facility, something that Greenmount prides itself on around the classrooms, uh, the library and all the other facilities that support our programme. So I'm going to hand over now to Matthew Orr, who's going to give us an overview at this stage. Hi, my name is Matthew and I am a student on the BSc Honours Degree in Agricultural Technology. Let me show you around Greenmount to give you a feel for what it's like to live and study here. There is a range of accommodation on campus which is competitively priced. The under 18 students stay in either Boyd or Fulton Hall. The bedrooms in Boyd Hall are en suite and comfortable. You can add your own bits and pieces to make it more homely. The over 18 students live in the self-catering accommodation in either one of the bungalows or the student lodges. With ensuite bedrooms, a shared kitchen, sitting room, laundry facilities, you can come and go as you like. Student areas are accessed via key card and college attendants are on duty through the night so it's a safe and secure place to live. The main place to eat on campus is a manor restaurant. It's open from 8 in the morning to 6 at night. Snacks and drinks are also available in the Cyber Cafe which is open until 10 at night. So there is absolutely no excuse for anyone to go hungry. Most students have a cater card which works the same way as a prepaid card so you don't have to carry cash about. Classes and social activities mostly take place in the Greenmount Resource Centre or as we call it, the GRC. The accommodation manager, Chris, and the residential support team are based here in the evenings. They are here to help with any queries or issues we may have. Staff, along with the student representative committee, arrange events like going to the cinema, ice skating, various sporting activities, or audience to Belfast. Students have full use of the gym and sports hall as well. Some of the staff run a cookery club in the evenings, which is great crack, and we get to eat what we cook so there is plenty to do. The Cyber Cafe is also the main social hub for students. There's TVs, pool and football tables, or computer games to enjoy. The core to any college is the library. Greenmount's library has a great selection of journals and books, as well as an extensive collection of e-learning materials. The pods are useful for group work and also to offer a quiet place to study. Greenmount is only three miles from Antrim. It has everything we need in terms of shops, cafes, restaurants and entertainment. We're only 30 minutes away from Belfast. There is a real sense of community at Greenmount. Students come from all over Northern Ireland and further afield. It's easy to make friends with people who are studying subjects that you are really interested in. College life offers new opportunities, it's so different to school. I hope you enjoyed the tour and maybe I will see you here next year. Thanks to Matthew for that overview of the facilities here and gives you a flavour of life at Greenmount campus. Just a few more questions that have come in and I'm going to again look to you Bethan um, in relation to these. In terms of a veterinary nurse, do you need a, a degree qualification to become a veterinary nurse? You don't know. So there are two different ways of qualifying and working um, as an RVN in the UK um, and Northern Ireland. Um, one of those ways is to get a degree um, and that is sort of the way the profession is moving. However, the level three diploma that we offer is still a, a sort of viable course. Um, so you will get the same qualification. You will still get the license to practice qualification, which allows you to work um, in Northern Ireland as an RVN. Um, what you could do once you've finished your training with us is to then go on and top up your qualification to a degree so that's one of the sort of the further study routes you can go um, there is also the opportunity to do certificates in advanced veterinary nursing as well just to further your skills um, for working in a fast-paced veterinary environment okay 
And a couple of other questions just around the application process. Is it directly to Greenmount that you would apply? It is, yes. Yeah. So our applications open um, on the 1st of October and they are open all the way until the end of June. So you can apply at any point. Thanks to Bethan for addressing those specific questions uh, that have been posed this evening. For more information on all the programmes that we've discussed across the veterinary nursing provision uh, in relation to fees uh, and the detail of the programmes themselves, please visit uh, the CAFRI website. In addition to that there, there's the opportunity to register for the campus tours, so please click uh, on the relevant links. At this stage, as we come to the end of our open evening, could I say again thank you to Claire and Bethan for helping me uh, address all the areas uh, around the veterinary nursing programmes. And I'm going to hand over now to uh, another member of staff just to cover the facilities that support all the programmes here at Greenmount Campus, a campus that cares. Thank you. Caffrey staff, supporting you to achieve your potential. Hello, I'm the Greenmount Librarian and I manage our learning resources in the library. The library was refurbished a couple of years ago and provides a welcoming place to study. Students love to come here to get books, journals or e-learning materials. It's also a great place to research on your own or in groups. As Simon due dates approach, the library can get really busy, but I'm always on hand to offer support. As a student support officer, I help students who have specific learning needs. I try to make the transition from school to college life as smooth as possible and have the support in place to help them complete their qualification. I usually meet the students before they start their course and agree a bespoke programme of support. They may need some extra time during exams or the allocation of support tutors. I am also the leading safeguarding officer for CAFRI and work in partnership with all staff to ensure that learners receive a high level of pastoral care. Hi, I'm the Student Services Manager at Greenmount Campus. Along with the residential support team, I'm responsible for managing student accommodation and providing pastoral care to all students. We are available in the evenings and overnight to make sure that everyone stays safe and well. We organise a weekly programme of evening activities to help you make new friends and settle into college life. Your welfare and safety is our priority.